good evening to one and all welcome you all to the daily indian express newspaper analysis for the date 28th november 2023 brought to you by ganesh ayer academy okay let's get into the today's newspaper analysis so mentioned here are the list of articles which we are going to have the analysis in the upcoming slides so have a look at it okay let's move on to today's analysis of each and every article one by one in mexico ecologist going all out to save the iconic water monster so the news is related to the uh, the effort by the ecologist in mexico to save the water monster because of its rapid decline in the population density in the past two decades that is what the news is about okay how the news is related to examination is under prelims it is related to general issues on environmental ecology biodiversity and climate change similarly under mains it is related to conservation environmental pollution degradation and environmental impact assessment okay let's move on to the analysis of the news axolots axolots is the type of fish like salamander have uh, declined in the population by 99.5 percentage uh, in the past two decades and uh, the what is the reason that has been quoted by the ecologist is first and foremost reason is the lack of monitoring of the all streams by the government agency secondly it is because of increased water pollution the rapid decline has taken place thirdly the increased non native rainbow trout it is a kind of fish which comes out of the agriculture field during the times of harvesting and this fish enters into the stream or the lakes where the axolots axolots will be uh, living because of the competition between the uh, rainbow trout as well as the axolots fish there will be increased uh, fighting between them because of the scarcity of the resource scarcity of the resources which in turn is as led to the decline of the axolots a uh, fish like salamander and then uh, chrytid fungus it is a kind of fungus which will be eating the skin on whose the on uh, whose body the fungus has been formed because of the formation of chrytid fungus it has led to a rapid decline of or the death of the salamander and uh, this is what the reason that has been quoted by the ecologist and uh, right now the mexico's national autonomous university has launched a fundraising campaign for the conservation effort so based on the amount that has been given they have set a threshold so above the threshold if they are donating means they could able to adapt the particular type of salamander if the amount is below the threshold means that amount could be used for providing food for the salamander which is in the lake streams or rivers etc and there are 18 species of axolots and but the government conservation or the uh, program to conserve the axolots aimed to save only a mere 2 to 3 species the remaining uh, 16 to 18 uh, 15 to 16 species haven't uh, bought any kind of attention from the government side so this is how the axolots will be looking like and uh, they are amphibians they could able to live in land as well as water and they are renowned for its ability to regenerate its spinal cord heart as well as limbs and this mechanism has been studied whether this regenerative mechanism or the chemical or the enzymes which enable the species to regenerate its uh, limbs could be useful for the medical purpose of the human kind so such kind of research is right now under experimental stage and the uh, full implementation of using its em enzyme for the regrowth of the human limbs has not uh, has not yet been fully uh, studied but uh, it is and it is right now under the uh, research stage 
second thirdly they exist in wild in only one places that is lake zachi milko which is near the mexico city and this lake zachi milko is called as universe uh, unesco heritage site and also at the same time they prey on mollusk worms insect larvae as well as crustaceans and small species so these are all the uh, food they will be eating but because of the competition from the uh, non native species they get, they have got wiped out from the area from which uh, where they usually need uh, will be they used to do habitat so what need to be studied further is we should be aware of what is this regenerative process is about secondly we should also be aware of the aquatic ecosystem thirdly we should also be aware of amphibians what are, what is amphibians what are all the characteristic of it what are all the different types of known amphibians to the human kind so these are all the other areas which we need to be further aware of and with this we have reached the end of this topic growing more from less so the news is related to or the article is related to how the agriculture has transformed from uh, uh, using more input to gain more output to uh, using uh, technology to increase the productivity of the agriculture sector this is what the news is about under the prelims it is related to economic and social development similarly under mains it is related to major crops cropping pattern in various parts of the country different types of irrigation and irrigation irrigating storage system which comes under gs paper 3 agriculture in agriculture there are four factors of production one is land water labor as well as energy so this four are the factors of production for agriculture system okay so for the given level of technology this the output of the production will be depend on, uh, dependent on the the quantity of this inputs used for example first let's let's take into the land so this scenario is pre um, green revolution a uh, green revolution period so when we are taking the land in the pre uh, pre green revolution area if the land is constrained the means then the farmer could not able to produce more amount of output if the land is huge or land is excess means they could be able to produce more amount of uh, agriculture products so we could able to see that uh, the according to niti ayog what they have said is that the agriculture has grown by 2.8 percentage during uh, 1952 1961 62 because of the increased availability of land and uh, so we could able to see that the country's net areas has also grown during this period from 118.75 lakh to 135.4 lakh hectares so from with the increase of the availability of land there is there is the increase in the growth of agriculture production this is for the scenario previous the pre era of the green revolution secondly water availability so if the water is available at enough or the adequate quantity from the lake pond or river means only the agriculture production will be taking place or or else if there is lesser amount of water means agriculture production will not be taking place or the output of the agriculture production will get reduced and thirdly so before the introduction of machines like in the case of tractors harvesters tillers the human labors laborers as well as the uh, bullocks laborers as acted as the source of the labor as well as energy system in the agriculture agriculture sector in the pre uh, green revolution period so we could able to see that as i said before the introduction of or the arrival of the tractor thresher harvester or the diesel electric uh, engine uh, tube wells they were using the energy source comes from the bullocks so the bullocks only used to plow the field and at the same time they used to uh, drag the or they used to power the persian wheel to draw the water from the wells for irrigation
and uh, this is this is the scenario in the pre green revolution period so we could able to see that the quantity of the fa uh, factor of production determines the output of the agriculture product but after green revolution it is the factor of technologies that began to replace the factor of production so the factor of technology in agriculture are the genetics crop nutrition crop protection and agronomic inter intervention so first look into the genetics see during the 1960s period there was a increased awareness with relation to the tweaking of the genetics in the agriculture products to increase their uh, production like in the case of the high yield wheat as well as rice varieties were uh, bred by people called norman borlong henry beechel gurudev singh kush and other scientists so which in turn has replaced the tall varieties of the uh, rice or paddy uh, varieties to the short as uh, short or the dwarf paddy or rice varieties why because the tall varieties has been replaced with the dwarf variety when the tweaking of the genetic system is see the dwarf variety could able to withstand more amount of input fertilizers or the high nutrient content where the case of the tall uh, plant varieties they could not able to withstand the high amount of nutrient fertilizer or because of the height they will be uh, they get flattened because of the uh, the weight in the seedlings so this is what the genetic factor is about so apart from the increasing or uh, reducing the uh, height of the um, paddy crops there is another tweaking that were made in the genetics so that the plant will become resistance to heat drought and also at the same time they will be producing high yield at the same land area so these are all the tweaks that has been made within the gene, uh, genetics of the crops during the 1960s to increase the crop yield and this yield has taken place on the same land where the more where the uh, the technologies hasn't been introduced so the pre green revolution area we, we, we have seen that if this land is going to produce a certain amount of productivity means this technology like in the case of tweaking the genetics of the crops produce more amount of yield when compared to the non uh, genetic technology crops Let's, secondly the fertilizer farmers traditionally used to uh, use the uh, natural menus that has been obtained from the bullocks the cow dung and the urine they will be composed and they will mix and they will be disposed across the field to increase their soil fertility so that the soil contains 0.5 percentage of nitrogen 0.2 percentage of phosphorus and then 0.5 percentage of potassium this is what the uh, composition of the soil whenever when the natural manure was used but after the introduction of uh, synthetic fertilizers the composition of the soil got increased that is the ureas that has been present in the soil as raised to 46 percentage and diammonium phosphate as raised to 18 uh, 18 percentage in terms of nitrogen and 46 percentage of in terms of phosphorus and then 60 percentage in terms of potassium see the composition has raised more than 100 times in the soil because of the introduction of the synthetic fertilizer through the uses through the usage of technologies so the increased fertilizers are the increased usage of fertilizer which is rich in the nutrients has also contributed to the growth in the field uh, yield of the agriculture production and at the same time crop protection the third uh, factor of technology is the crop protection so we could be able to see that apart from the fertilizers it is the introduction of synthetic pesticides which protected the crop from the weeds uh, not only pesticides herbicides also 
weeds, pests, pathogens, so on and so forth, so that the crop would not get damaged and they will be producing the more amount of or more yield from the available plot or the agriculture land. Thirdly, fourthly, it is the agronomic intervention. Agronomic intervention is nothing but introduction of machines like in the case of tractors, tillers, harvesters, which was uh, which were used for breaking the hard pan layers of the soil or mixing the soil or the pulverization of the soil. So, this is what the agronomic intervention. And uh, apart from this mechanization, in terms of water use, water use efficiency, the agronomic interventions like drip irrigations. drip irrigations, laser land levelers were also been introduced to increase the water use efficiency in the agriculture system. So that these are all the factor of technologies that has contributed to the increase in the yield of the agriculture production on the same land or the same amount of water and the same amount of powers as well as labors. And in most of the case the labors the cost of the laborers has been reduced because of the introduction of mechanizations. So, this is what the news is about. So, after independence till the pre green revolution period, we are focusing more on increasing our production with the, in, with the aim of or uh, through the process of increasing the inputs like uh, agriculture, land, water, labor and energy. But after green revolution, or agriculture production or the yield got increased because of the efficiency in the process like in the case of uh, using the genetic technologies or uh, using mechanization of, tech, uh, mechanization of the technologies or the introduction of uh, crop uh, protection techniques or the introduction of fertilizer to enrich the nutrients in the soil. So, we have moved from quantity to quality. This is what the news is about. So, we could able to see that from the data itself. So, the uh, India has risen a net of net zone areas by 3.3 percentage that is from 135.4 hectares lakh hectares to 139.9 lakh hectares between 1961 to 2019 20 period. But it is we could able to see that the percentage of increase in the production is way higher bit, uh, than this period and between the 1951 50 51 to 1961 62 period so even though the agricultural land availability has stagnated our productivity got increased which in turn lead to higher yield between 61 to 2019 20 and thus productivity or the yield is high, most importantly the yield is higher than the amount of yield that was available during the 1950-51 to 1961-62 period with the same amount of land. So, this is what the news is about. So, what are all the things which we need to be further aware of is we should also be aware of what is green revolution, what is MSP and then PDS system. And uh, these are all the other areas which we need to be further aware of and with this we have reached the end of this topic. Global goods trade recovering driven by electric vehicle sales says World Trade Organization. So, the news is related to the recent report by the WTO what it has said is that the global goods trade has increased because of the rise in the trade of electric vehicle. So, under prelims it is related to economic and social development. Similarly, under means it is related to Indian economy and issues relating to planning, mobilization of resource, growth, development and, and the employment which comes under GS paper 3 economic and development. So, the global merchandise trade as recovered due to sales in the automobile parts. Why this automobile sales has peaked? It is because of the demand for the electric vehicles. And uh, at the same time, the report that has been released by the WTO, which mentioned this kind of data, is the global trade barometers. 
and what the barometer is saying is that the reading of the index has clocked at 100.7 which is higher than the 99.1 from the previous quarter and the what the barometer is additionally saying is that if the value of the index is greater than 100 means then it is called as above the trend about the trend growth and if it is below the uh, the index values below 100 means is it is below the trend growth so since it is 100.7 it is uh, somewhat slightly above than above than the the trend growth and this automobile as well as the electric products has uh, led the process of the uh, barometer index so that it has reached above the 100 points which is the threshold that has been set by the index And at the same time, India is the fastest going, uh, growing economic vehicle market and India has contributed a huge lump sum for the demand in the electric vehicle which in turn has led to growth in the demand for the automobile parts as well as electronic components. And what the economic survey 2022-23 has said is that, see our domestic electric vehicle market will, will be seeing a rise of 49%. Compounded annual growth rate between 22 and 2030 period with uh, 10 million annual sales by 2030 period. So, we could be able to see that the growing market of India has also contributed to the growth in the trade of the automobile spare parts as well as the electronic components. So, what is the benefit of this electric vehicle? Why it has been given? stress during this period of time is it is less maintenance because they have fewer more moving parts when compared to the diesel engine vehicles or the petrol engine motorcycles it is alternative to combustion engines powered by uh, combustion engines which was powered by fossil fuels so that it has it is it will reduce the carbon footprints and it will lessen lesser the india's reliance on the gulf countries in terms of our imports of the crude oil Fourthly, it will be benefit the, the regional industries which in turn will be leading to increased manufacturing in the domestic area. This is, this is what the benefits of electric vehicle in India, not only in India, it is, it is the same kind of benefits that will be available to major part of the major uh, different countries. So what is the challenges for electric vehicle is that it is expensive to be set up because of the charging infrastructure, storage infrastructure it needs. Secondly, the dependency on China has increased because most amount of most of the raw materials or the spare parts that is needed to manufacture or assemble the electric vehicle is available only in China, which in turn uh, has increased the dependency of China so that the dependency has widened the deficit, trade deficit. And then the lack of availability of highly technical or the capable human resource to handle this kind of new technologies. Fourthly, inadequate electric supply will also act as hindrance for the growth of electric vehicle industry in India. Not only in India, most of the developing countries. So what are all the things which we need to be further aware of is, we should be aware of what is FAME, FAME scheme which has been introduced as well as implemented by Department of Heavy Industries. Secondly, we should also be aware of electric vehicle policies. Thirdly, production link incentive scheme. So, these are all the other areas which we need to be further aware of and with this we have reached the end of this topic. Kambala comes to Bengaluru. How Buffalo Race's popularity outran the band? So, the news is related to the recent incident of the Kambala Race which was taken for the which was taken place for the first time in Bengaluru. Under prelims it is related to history of India and Indian national movement. Similarly, under means it is related to GS paper 1, Indian uh, uh, under topic called culture, under a subtopic called Indian culture, which will cover the salient aspect of the art form, literature, architecture from ancient to modern times. Okay, let us move on to the news. So, this is what the news is. The Bangalore has seen the, the Kambala's race for the first time in the past week. So, what does this Kambala is about? This is the spoke. Folk, uh, sport practiced in, practiced in the coastal district of Karnataka, especially in where the, the Tulu speakers form the majority of the population. And uh, the, uh, 
this kambalas will be the kambala rays will be conducted especially after the harvesting of the paddy season and uh, recently more organization or the organizers has emerged like in the case of kambala samitis or other organizers organize organizers have emerged to conduct the race in race of kambalas in different part of the state and the kambala is considered as ma matter of prestige for many families especially the bunt communities in the coastal areas so this is what the kambala is about and what are the categories of the kambala there are four categories of the kambala race first is negilu where the uh, light plows will be used to tie buffaloes for the race secondly haga where the buffaloes will be raced by jockey with rope tying the buffaloes thirdly hada halage it is the jockey that will be uh, he, uh, jockey who will be standing at the on a over a horizontal plank and he, he will be dragged by the buffalo and it is the kana halage fourth thing. it is the here also uh, the jockey will be standing on a wooden block and the buffaloes will be tied by the rope and uh, this wooden block will be having two holes beneath it so when the jockey has been uh, dragged by the buffaloes the water will uh, the water that is present beneath the wooden plank will come outside of the hole the height of the water that has been splashed outside the hole will determine the winner of the kana kani halage race so these are all the four categories under which the kambalas race will be held and is kambalas popular across in karnataka it is popular in the coastal district of karnataka but after the uh, movies like kandara it got uh, popularity across the different parts of the state and movies also portrayed this race as the pan karnataka race not uh, not as the coastal karnataka race so it is not right now which is which was initially been popular uh, popular popularized in coastal karnataka is right now is getting spread to different parts of karnataka and why was kambala outlawed see several organization like in the case of people for the ethical treatment of animal that is the peta and others have filed the uh, filed against the all traditional sportings uh, sporting events like jallikattu and kambala for animal abuse but the complaint was the supreme court which in turn has heard and the complaint against the kambalas uh, was that the buffalo's noses were tied with rope and the animals were whipped by whipped continuously during the race which amounts to cruelty and the uh, supreme court heard this petition as well as the arguments as led to ban of jallikattu as well as kambala and then bullakkat in the maharashtra region in 2014 but how the ban was lifted lifted is because of the popularity of the kambala race in the karnataka the state legislature assembly has amended its law to overcome or to overrule the supreme court judgment and why how was the ban lifted by the supreme court itself is since during 2016 the environment ministry has issued a notification where it has given an exp uh, exemption to the races like jallikattu kambalas as well as the the bullakkat race in maharashtra but this exemption comes along with the conditions like that condition aimed to reduce the suffering of those animals which has been used for such kind of traditional activities and uh, peta and as well as other organizations also appealed against such kind of uh, notification being issued by the environment ministry but supreme court ruled against the petition that has been filed by the peta and then other uh, organizations so this is how the ban has been lifted and then the respective state governments like tamil nadu karnataka and maharashtra have amended the prevention to prevention of cruelty to animals act to suit their needs so that the traditional uh, races or the traditional activities will be continued without any kind of hindrance so this is how the 
news is about and with this we have reached the end of this topic let's move on to today's practice prelims question mentioned here is the today's practice prelims question one those students those who are watching the session online please do comment the option point for the question which you are seeing right now on the board with this we have reached the end of today's session please do like comment share as well as subscribe ganesh is youtube channel so that you will get uh, notification with, with relation to the current affairs session and also any other important uh, session with relation to the examination that will be brought to you in the future by ganesh is academy thank you